say you've taken Satsuki Azalea cuttings and you get cuttings with completely dark purple flowers or pink flowers like this one and you get the ones with just white flowers like that one. Which one would you keep and which one would you keep a uh, giveaway? I know, you would want to keep this and give this away, right? Wrong. This is the one you keep, this is the one you give away. Why? In this video I'll explain why. Hey you welcome, this is Jelle from Growing Bonsai and today we're looking at Azaleas, and not just any azaleas, no, we're looking at Rhododendron indicum, the Satsuki azaleas, or as some parts of the world call them, Satsuki azaleas. Um, now, a few questions about Satsuki azaleas that I will be dealing with in this video is, how do you care for them? How do you prune them in a way that you don't lose the ability to create multiple colors of flowers on the same tree? And why do we have multiple colors of flowers on azalea trees? Now let's start with the beginning here. If you look at all these plants here in front of me, you have completely white, you have striped flowers, you have light pink, you have dark pink, you have pink with a bright white center. You could say these are all different varieties of azaleas, but you are wrong. These are all the same variety. It is the Asuka Satsuki azalea, and this one is known for the base color pink, purple. I'm a guy, what do I know about colors? Anyway, what you see here is a natural transition of the flower color in the tree. There is of course this discussion, is it a bonsai or is it not? It is officially, it's a shrub and they don't grow naturally as a tree. And people often just style them to showcase the flowers, but you can also showcase the branch structure in itself. They have nice small leaves. So in itself, it is a nice plant to create bonsai off, even if you don't go for the very nice horizontal wide plateaus with all the flowers. In Japan, when they are grown for flowers, it is very important that you get patterns also with the flowers in the tree. So you want the darker flowers a little bit more in the inside, lighter flowers on the outside, replicating shaded areas and non-shaded areas. So growing these from a cutting into a bonsai requires a lot of planning and careful pruning. This is why it is important to mark down the branches that have a special color, so you know later on, okay, I'm going to keep this or I'm going to remove this. Satsuki is the Japanese word for five. And it does not reflect the number of flowers, not the number of branches, or even the number of petals on the flower, even though it, this one has five petals. No, it reflects the month of flowering, which typically in Japan is in the fifth month of the year, May. Now, this one is flowering in June. It's a little bit late. I worked on it over winter, I repotted it. But let's delve into the calendar a little bit, right? Um, so now if we look at the calendar of Satsuki Azalea, look at these gorgeous little flowers. See how they're different even here next to each other? This one has a completely pink petal and this one doesn't. Such a shame. Anyway, the calendar for Satsuki Azalea. Basically, these are dormant until, well, March, April in my climate. So early spring. In early spring, slowly you see that the buds start to swell if you left the bud on place. And you just let it go. You just let it grow, you water it, you don't do much except for letting it grow. Then comes May, and May is the time that you really enjoy your flowers. Now if you have a very big bonsai and it is full of flowers, you can consider removing a part of the flowers because the branches become too full of flowers and you don't see the tree anymore. Yeah, that's right, there can be too many flowers on a tree. Now later in the month, um, basically, once a third to half of the flowers have flowered, you can start considering removing the rest of the flower buds. This will greatly enhance the strength of the tree, which will help you grow new branches this year. At this time, you'll also see small buds starting to appear all along the main branches. So you can, at this time, also prune back your bonsai. Summer comes and starts growing. And in the middle of summer, around July, you should be careful with pruning because that is when the end buds are set, which are basically the flower buds for next year. Now, if you prune at this time, you run the risk that you prune off the flower bud that's developing at the end of the branch. This also means that if you really want to conserve energy for next year, this is exactly what you should do. Late summer, you go through your trees and you look for the tiniest of buds on the tree and you remove them. It means you won't have flowers next year, but it also means the tree won't spend any resources getting flowers, buds ready for the next season. Don't worry, the year after, it will of course create flower buds again. You only lose one year of flowers, but you might gain a year of strength. 
Then you just let it grow and in fall, once frost becomes evident, you move it into a sheltered position. These are not fully frost hardy, so it is best to shelter them at a few degrees above frost. What you can see, these are all planted in a yellowish substrate. This is Kanuma and it is a Japanese substrate harvested in the state of Kanuma and it is acidic. And this is very, very nice for azaleas because azaleas like somewhat acidic soil. The open structure allows water to penetrate through it quite well, so you can water these quite frequently without running big problems. Frequent watering of your Satsuki azaleas is important because you might know the saying, a dry azalea is a dead azalea, and that is very much true. And the big flowers require a lot of water. So in spring, make sure that as it is starting to push and starting to flower, that you water them well. Every second watering, you don't water all the way until the pot drains, but you just water the surface. That is because most of the uptake takes place by surface roots. And by not, not filling the pot completely with water, you ensure that you don't get a lot of water standing at the bottom of the pot, even though the upper roots dry out. This is also why I train these in very, very shallow containers. Um, I want to develop the surface roots. That is where most of the action takes place. Fertilize heavy. But keep in mind, you fertilize these with a fertilizer that might be specific for azaleas that enhances the acidity. It is probably a little bit richer in iron, making sure pH goes down and the plant can take up the nutrients much better. Watering ideally is done with rainwater or osmotic controlled water. You want water that is low in scale, low in calcium carbonates. I use rainwater whenever I can. These can take a lot of sun. They stand in full sun in my garden, um, except for the hottest part of the day. So somewhere around 11, shade hits them. And then somewhere around 3, 4 in the afternoon, sun comes on them again. Uh, this they seem to love, as long as they have lots and lots of water. So after flowering, you're going to take the flower and you're just going to pull it off. Here, I've pulled off the flower, but also the stem. And this way I ensure that the part here at the bottom this is where the seeds are created, is also removed, because that is what you're after. You're not after removing just the petals, no, you're after the seed forming organs. This is, this is what you need to remove in order to really conserve strength of your tree. Now, once you've done that, you can prune the azalea, you can prune it as far as you want. It will backbud on all the branches. Of course, you do this for trees that are healthy and well established. These, I just potted up in full, so I'm not going to prune them all that much, but I am going to remove all the flowers. But before you do, Mark the branches with the white flowers, so that when you start pruning, you remember these are branches that I want to keep. You can only do that during the flowering season. Of course, in winter you can look at the leaves that are still around the bud. And the buds that are going to have color, most likely, are much darker colored than the one that have fly white flowers. Keep in mind, the more sunlight hits the flowers, the less deep the color will be. So for the deepest color, Make sure you don't give it direct sunlight in the middle of the day. That way the color will not bleach out as quickly and you have a more vibrant color. What happens with this type of azaleas is that as the plant or branch matures, at a certain point a gene might flip. And what happens is you originally have nice white flowers on your tree and then the gene flips and all of a sudden you have the striping in there. So this is a striping gene. Base color pink. And here I have very light striping, here I have some heavier striping, and here actually the striping has turned into a full color pink flower. Take it one step further, you have a pink flower with a white heart, and you take it one step further, and the flower is completely pink. Now what is important to realize here is that the coloring and the patterning is pretty much a one-way street. So the basic flower is white, add a little bit of color or a pattern to it and you get the pink striping that you see on these and you add more and more color you get to those colors and you cannot go the other way so a branch that has pink flowers never say never but pretty much never returns to have white flowers or white pink striped flowers now what does this mean when you're pruning your azalea a few things if you're pruning and you want to take cuttings these were all cutting grown and I just got them last year. You have to pay attention which branch you use for cuttings because this one will only grow the pink flower with the white heart and the completely pink flowers. 
it is very unlikely that this one will recreate white flowers. Same for this one. So these tools, they're not going to stay in my garden very much. I'm going to hand them over. But if you have the young cuttings, it is sometimes hard to tell. Now this is one of my base plants that I'm going to use for cuttings because it still produces the white flower. So this is going to be a key element in my collection. I'm only going to take cuttings from branches with white flowers. This one is just nice. This one is nice. This is the only branch that I've found so far with this mottled color on there. So this is also one that I'm going to keep, although I know that all of these can still produce them. These cannot. These are at the end of the road for the colors. Of course, a gene mutation can still happen, but it's less likely, likely to happen on these. Um, this is a very interesting part of these azaleas from a genetics perspective. I'm not going to bore you with it, because this is just basically the baseline information that you need to know. You start off with the lightest version of the flower, and you turn it into the darkest version of the flower. Now what will happen um, is that a branch like this, with a bright white flower, well this one is actually striped, but say this is white, it grows, it grows, and at a certain point the gene switches. And then you go from the white to the striped, and from the striped you go to the pink one. And basically all the growth that was there until the genetics switched will remain white. Then the part grown after that will have the stripes. And if it switches again, that's when you get the purple flowers. But it doesn't always mean that they're at the end of the plant. Because also here this mutation might take place, creating dark flowers. Or here, or here. So it's always good if you have taken cuttings to wait for flowers to occur to really check well which branches are good and which are not and have I taken cuttings of a plant that is useful. These ones are less useful for future development and in fact I can't even use the variety name Asuka anymore because Asuka is characterized by white, pink striped, pink with white heart and dark pink flowers. So make sure you mark the pots of the cuttings in the color that you don't want to keep. So you know later on, after flowering, which one to give away. To push development of azaleas, it is useful to remove the flowers early on. So I just do this. It has flowered now a little bit. I know that this is not one I'm going to keep. I can remove all the azaleas to create more growth. Doing this minimizes the amount of energy the tree spends on building buds and therefore can gr start growing stronger and faster earlier in the season, helping with development. Make sure you don't pull on the plant itself if it is just replanted and hasn't been wired in, because you might just pull it out of the ground. You can see here already the first growth is starting to appear at the base of the former flower. Removing the flower now will help push this. I can now of course also prune back enhancing the growth there. But because I'm going to give these away, I'm not going to do any development pruning. I'm just going to let them grow. To remove the flowers, ensure that you leave the, the leaves and you just remove the flower and the base. You can do this, of course, with a scissor. You can grab the base of the branch and take a hold of the bud and just rotate it off. Or you grab the base of the branch and you use your nails to pinch the flower off. So I water these at least once a day. This is just a primer on the Satsuki azaleas, so no more for me. Have fun growing these, keep track of the white flowers, and see you next time. Keep growing bonsai.